we know that the Western Roman Empire that, that was centered in, in Rome um, came to an end in 476 AD, okay? Um, and now we're gonna find out, and we, we talked earlier about how a lot of this lesson too is studies about the medieval period, 500 to 1500. Well, what was happening in Europe during that period? Um, and that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. Um, so, I don't, that's not the share I was looking for. So after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, a system takes place in Europe that we call the feudal system. And under the feudal system, um, there were kings of individual kingdoms or, or, or countries, and the king would then break up his land into you know, dozens or hundreds of different little chunks and give them to his closest advisors, his, his family, his cousins, and, um, uncles, etc. cetera, and, and he would make them lords. They would then build a castle on their land. They would hire knights who would protect their castle. Um, and 99% of the people were peasants. This, this little triangle I made here, it, it's inaccurate. Um, if it was accurate, there would actually be hundreds and hundreds of little peasants down here um, who were tied to the land. They couldn't leave their lord's land. And in return for that loyalty to their lord, when their land was attacked, the lord would allow them to come into the castle walls, he would put up the drawbridge, and the knights would protect the people, right? This was called the feudal system. And this is how Europe was governed for a thousand years after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. And really, what it turns out to be is that 99% of the people were peasants who could never move up in society, who lived in abject poverty, who didn't have clothes that, that fit them, um, who barely had enough money to survive, and or enough food to survive. They didn't even get money. They'd be allowed to like get some of the leftovers from the king's land that they, they worked on. It was a horrible time in Europe. Um, and because it was such a horrible time in, in Europe, the church got really powerful, you know, and, and popular and important. Um, it was one of the only stable forces in Europe. And a lot of people thought, look, life is miserable on earth, but if I do the right thing, then when I die, I'll get to heaven. So the church had incredible power in Europe during these thousand years, okay? Let me go to my PowerPoint now. Um, so we talk about Charlemagne. Look, um, in 750, the Muslims who had taken over Spain started trying to move into France, okay? And they were stopped. I'm going to pull this map up, actually. Um, they were stopped right along the border here by a guy named Charles the Hammer Martel. All right, and Charles Martel um, was said to have saved Europe for Christianity because Islam would have taken over all of Europe and spread. There was no one strong enough to stop them, but he did. And his grandson was a guy named Charlemagne. And Charlemagne will unite France, um, big chunks of Germany, and northern Italy together into what he calls the Holy Roman Empire. And this Holy Roman Empire will be the most powerful force in Europe for hundreds of years following Charlemagne's life. Um, and really it kind of moves out of France and it moves into Germany where, where it will, will be the most powerful force in Europe. The Pope gave, gave a blessing to Charlemagne and, and named him the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Um, and, and they would then be a powerful group in Europe, but still not the most powerful group in Europe. And they were never really that unified. Um, I'm, I'm seeing some chats. Let me check my chat. What's going on here, guys? Um, oh, just a bunch of nothing. All right, take it easy. Um, so we talked about feudalism, the system that was put in place and last for a thousand years, the church being the most powerful group. And, and one of the things that happens is around the year, oh, a thousand, okay? Um, the church starts to call out that they need, they want knights, they want volunteers um, to put a, together an army. So the King of France, the King of England, the King of Germany, please put together an army. We need to go down and we need to take Jerusalem back from the Muslims. Actually, in my class, is to have a game.
<clears throat> All right, so um, during this period, um, Europeans, Christians, So during this period, um, Christian Europeans showed up um, in huge numbers and wave at a time went down to the Middle East and tried to take Jerusalem back. Jerusalem, of course, is the home of, um, it was where Jesus lived and taught, right? That, that, that's the Christian story. I mean, and there are accounts, this is um, from historians of the period that are considered reputable sources that say that there was probably a, a rumor of a guy named Jesus who lived um, in the Middle East. So a lot of historians would say that maybe that's true. Um, he lived there, not all the other stories, but the, the fact there was a guy who, who started this religion in that area. So, so the, the Pope sends down wave after wave of um, armies to try and take over the the Holy Land, and <clears throat> it doesn't work. I mean, they, they do take it at one point. There's an English leader named King Richard the Lionheart who takes Jerusalem back um, from a Muslim leader named Saladin, but then 20, 30 years later, Saladin takes it back over, and the Christians can't hold this land. But on their journey, they, they um, stop by Constantinople oftentimes, which you guys know a lot about now, Istanbul, Constantinople. Um, and, and, and they, they actually robbed this great Christian city of Constantinople, weakening, weakening it. Um, <clears throat> but they also um, learn, they, they get books from the area, old Roman writings, old Roman books that they bring back to Europe that will eventually help lead to um, the, chap the next chapter, which is the Renaissance or the rebirth of great European cultures. Um, so this this crusades was was an attempt to take back what they call the holy land didn't work um, although it was close at one point um and, and then in the year 1300 the black death spreads throughout europe um the bubonic plague the the, the great plague um and it kills a quarter to a third of the population in some cities half of the people die um it's spread by fleas on the back of rats, um, which says a lot about Europe at that time, because if, if you got the, the plague from the flea, that means you had fleas. <laughs> um, yeah, this was a dirty time. People slept with their animals to keep warm inside. This was a, a bad, bad time to be alive in Europe. Um, but after the Black Plague in the 1300s, um, so many people are killed that peasants start to move out to fill jobs that have opened up in the cities because of all of the deaths. This kind of um, signifies the end of feudalism. 